Tennessee. Not only coming, he sings it. Live for over 250 dates on the annual tour. But this is the one he's really waiting for. The best town on the tour. Tonight, live in... Bradford. Yes, wonderful! Bradford. Famous for its superb. Courage. And it's amazing. Bradford City Football Club. Yay! Let's not forget this incredible, awe inspiring cheap cannabis. So please, welcome to the stage, Mr. Howard Richard. And the crowd went wild. Nice. Lovely to see you. Uh, well, welcome. Yes, very nice too. Is it um, is it is it too loud? No, no. no I'm in the suit. <laughs> Have I gone a bit too far? It does look, I do look a bit of a div in it, don't I? I'm sorry about that. I'll never get two things said about me. One is anti fat, and the other is don't you look like that Paddy from Emmerdale? That bed. <laughs> I get that a lot. Um, can I, you mind if I take this off? I feel a bit overdressed. Let the Ammon just 121 nights until Christmas. Yay! That's the way, isn't it? I fold that up and put it somewhere. Um, anybody you love? Anybody in season? Anybody in? All the romantic people shout, hey up fat lad. All the rheumatic people shout, hey up fat lad. I only put this up, by the way, just in case you haven't seen me before because it says uh, I'm fat, I'm getting on a bit, I try and be funny and I sing a bit. Fair enough? Yeah. The fat thing don't bother me as long as you don't pat me. I don't like that. If, you get, if you're fat, you always get patted by ladies of the opposite, you know. I mean, this club the other night stood at the bar, this woman walked up to me, she's giving it this on my belly. She's going, oh, look at this, is it John Smith's bitter? Is it, is it Carlin Lager? I said, I don't know, love, there's a little tap underneath if you want to taste it. <laughs> Not that little. <laughs> Let gentlemen, guinea pig time, new joke. Are you ready? Yes. Three doctors in Bradford Hospital are all having a chat. One says to the other two, he says, I'm the best doctor in the world, mate. He says, I've had a guy in my surgery recently that his leg chopped off and I've sawed his back on, I've his leg back on. And he's uh, now in the um, Olympic 100 metre relay squad. Other well, fellow says, well, that's nothing. I had a fella in my surgery that his head chopped off and I've sawed his head back on. And that fella's now in the mastermind final on the telly. The other fellow said, I'm a better doctor than you two put together. I had a fellow in my surgery, he'd been riding a horse. Rode his horse onto a railway track, a train hit him and the horse at 130 miles an hour. All that to work within the operating theatre was the horse's ass and the man's blonde hair. That man is now the Prime Minister of Great Britain. <laughs> We might have bumped him off by now, but we don't, we don't bump people off in this country like they do in America. They're going mad, aren't they, in America? You know, like Trump. I thought somebody would have taken a shot at Trump by now because he's a bit controversial. You either love him, a bit marmite, isn't he? You either love him or you hate him. And, and Trump, he, he, the reason why he's still alive is because his bodyguards are the best in the world. Trump's bodyguards supplied by Walt Disney Company. <laughs> Oh, that's true. Walt Disney Company supplied Donald Trump with his bodyguards. So if anybody takes a shot at him, somebody shouts, Donald Duck! <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, uh, thank you for uh, inviting me along this evening to do it with uh, in Paul's show. Um, I, uh, I, 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 I don't get out much because I haven't got the lady in my life anymore. Aww. Nobody wants me. I once went out with a girl, she was one of identical twins. People used to say, how do you tell them apart? Well, it was easy, really, because her brother had a bald head and a mustache. But yeah, no, uh, the thing is, what it is, I'll tell you what it is, I get a bit, we do it, but sometimes we get a bit down in the dumps, no, we're a bit depressed, a bit fed up with ourselves, we like to go out, see his friends, have a drink and all that, yeah. I should do that more, because I get a bit browned off sometimes. Recently I travelled all the way to Switzerland, to a suicide clinic, <laughs> and I booked in the hotel next door, 
and I'm going to have myself bumped off. I was so depressed, ladies and gentlemen. As you see, I didn't go through with it. I'm still here. Every morning at breakfast time, the waiter used to come round. All the people who were going in the suicide clinic, and um, well, he used to take the mick. Every morning, really put me off. Every morning, he'd walk round offering everybody a bowl of Cheerios. <laughs> Insensitive, I thought that. <laughs> and then I bought this giant bottle of paracetamol. I was going to overdose. In the end, I just took two and felt much better. <laughs> and then one night, I'm laid across the tracks at Wakefield Westgate Railway Station, just down the road here. And I were in, I laid across the tracks at half past eleven at night, waiting for the express train to come and run me over. I was so depressed. Laid it across the tracks. I guess my mobile phone out my pocket and rings the Samaritans. I said, hello, my name's Mark Ritchie and I'm a fat old comic who sings a bit and I'm so depressed. I'm laid across the tracks here at Wakefield Westgate Station waiting for the express train to come and run me over. The fella says, whatever you do, stay on the line. <laughs> you need that, don't you? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a new, uh, I've got a new album out, hmm, which is due to be released about the same time as Rose West. And, you know, and I'd like to do a track from it right now. The problem is with this song, ladies and gentlemen, whenever I perform it, I do tend to get uh, quite sad and emotional. I don't want to bring uh, the, the mood of the room down because you seem like nice people. Uh, but the thing is, if you just listen to the words of the first verse, you sort of get what I mean because, you know, I'm filling up. And the thought of performing this very sad song for you, lovely people here tonight in Bradford. I am actually filling up with emotion. Do you, you think I'm full of it, don't you? Well, so anyway, if you listen to the words, you'll, you'll sort of see, you'll see what I mean. You ever seen a blind man cross the road Trying to make the other side <laughs> so Camilla Parker Bowles is in the back seat of her chauffeur driven car being driven home one night by her chauffeur it's a bit wet on the road, he's going around the corner a bit fast and he skids and runs headlong into this herd of cattle crossing the road killing one of these beasts stone dead in the road Camilla went Oh, bugger <laughs> Posh <cow. laughs> And she said we can't leave this poor beast dead in the road like this she says to the chauffeur go up to that farmhouse up the top Tell the farmer what has transpired. He gets out of the car, this show for his rain, and he's fed up. Fed up of working for this woman. He's trudging up the lane to get to the farmhouse, knocks on the door, farmer lets him in. Three and a half hours he's sat in that farmhouse with the farmer, necking the whiskey. Necking the whiskey. And he's just getting hammered with the farmer. And he's left her sat in the car, Camilla. He comes out, the, three and a half hours later, he comes out, he's absolutely hammered. Swaying about like an MFI wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> he gets down the car, she says, where have you been? Well, now, he said, well, my lady, I went to the farmer's door, knocked on the door. I said, hello, I'm the chauffeur of Camilla Parker Balls and I've just knocked the cow over. He said, come on in, let me drink. <laughs> There's this thing called political correctness. People drive you mad with being PC. You've got to be ever so careful because people love being offended. <gasps> Some people love it, you know, getting offended. And um, I mean, I'm not bothered who I offend, to be honest, because I'll tell you what, I'm fed up. I'm fed up of these Bulgarians and these Romanians. They come over here stealing our Polish people's jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I do not think it's up. Honestly, I don't. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I've, I've got a very sexy tune to do now. The trouble is with this song, ladies and gentlemen, it only emphasises the fact that I've been very unlucky in love over the years. The last wife kicked me out for being too fat. It was Christmas, and she said, um, what do you want for Christmas then, fat lad? <laughs> I says, well, what I'd really like is something that goes from 0 to 60 in less than three and a half seconds. Christmas came. Do you know what I got? Bathroom scales. 
the last one, the last girlfriend I had, um, she kicked me out at the day after Valentine's Day. She didn't like the present, apparently. I took her, took her out for, I don't mean with a rifle. I mean, you know, I mean, I took her out for, for a date, you know, and, and I took her out in the afternoon for tea and biscuits. She'd never given blood before. <laughs> And then at night she says, it's Valentine's Day, can you book us a table somewhere nice? Well, I didn't know she didn't like snooker. I had no idea. I don't think it were a real day, you see. So, legend also, she didn't like, she, to, to be honest, she didn't get me out for Christmas the one before that. And I had to rely on my next door neighbours to get me this for Christmas. I don't know if you can see this from where you're sitting. This is not from the lucky, lucky man in Benidorm. This is a genuine Rolex. <laughs> My next door neighbours got me this for Christmas, last Christmas. They are a pair of lesbians. <laughs> Came round just before Christmas, she said, what do you want for Christmas? I said, I want to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure she got what I meant, but... <laughs> but it's a lovely present, isn't it? Any road up, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, uh, something kind of uh, all about being unlucky in love. On a show of hands, please. Just me, then. <laughs> no, I have. I've been desperately unlucky in love, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, to emphasise the point, this. So many times I thought I knew the score But girl, you treated me so bad I can't take anymore And it looks like I'm never gonna fall In love Ooh. Now I mean it, 
Paul.